David Farmer, and I work at the American Institute of Mathematics. So AIM is one of the eight NSF-funded math institutes, um, MSRI, IMA, IPAM, you've probably heard of some of them. The main activity we have at AIM are week-long research activities, either workshops of about 28 people or groups of four to six people coming for a week at a time. All of them are extremely highly specialized. Um, I'm a mathematician. I'm one of the three mathematicians in charge of AIM. But you know, 90% of the activities, I have no idea what they're talking about, because it's research in some area that I, I don't know. Um, a thing we started about 15 years ago to help support these activities was to compile the collected works of mathematicians. Historically, only big shot mathematicians near the end of their career have their collected works published. But we thought it would be a useful resource to um, compile the works of all active mathematicians. So we asked the people coming to AIM to contribute their reprints. And um, if someone's retiring and they have filing cabinets full of reprints, we ask them to please donate it to us. So what we do is we Here's part of my collected works. We take the reprints from the journal, we stick them in little plastic sleeves, and we uh, catalog them online. So uh, if we go and look for mine, then, uh, now I don't actually have about 70 papers. So there's duplicates because my co-authors who also donated their papers are there. Uh, so this project has been pretty successful. Uh, most people who, if they have filing cabinets of papers, organize them by authors. This is the way mathematicians typically organize their papers. And in some sense, we've been too successful because those black binders take up a lot of space, and we kind of don't have any room for any more uh, papers. But also, in the last five years, it's much more difficult to get people to donate their papers, especially since the journals don't send reprints very much anymore. Especially the younger mathematicians say, I'm sorry, I don't have any dead tree copies of my papers. Okay? So we decided that we want to go to an online system of making the collected works of all mathematicians. So that's the motivation for this project uh, that I'm talking about. So um, lots of people have their papers on their home page. Um, of course, math reviews, catalogs, and reviews all the published papers. And the archive at Cornell is a place that lots of mathematicians um, uh, put their papers. So what we currently consider to be your collected works is all the papers you put on the archive plus all your papers that have appeared in math reviews. Okay? So here is what my collected works look like. Okay? So let me decipher the Venn diagram at the top. I have 11 papers in Mass Sinet that, have not, that are not on the archive. I have 25 papers that are in math reviews and also on the archive. And I have 13 papers that are on the archive that are not yet in math reviews. And some of them will never be in math reviews because I don't intend to submit them anywhere. I just put them out there in case these little results were useful to people. Okay? So um, it, the math, math reviews has beautiful author identification. You go search for somebody, and when you click on their name, you get exactly theirs. The archive has absolutely terrible name recognition. The best you can do to look for me is D. Farmer. And I'm not the only D farmer in the archive. So somebody, in this case me, had to by hand go to the archive and say which of those papers are actually by me. And someone, also me, had to say which paper on the archive matches which paper in math reviews. So there's actually no duplicates here. Okay? So that's what we mean by collected works. And well, it's of limited use if we don't make the actual papers available online. So well, traditionally, what does this mean? Here's one of my papers in PDF. 
Um, you can see I grabbed it from uh, the archive. And, you know, this looks like, you know, every other math paper that's not in your area. It's like if you want to know what, where's my mouse? What's 11.4.1, you jump and you go there. There's at least three things that are not satisfying about looking at a PDF on your computer. It's a bit jarring that I jumped from page to page, so I can go back. Where's the go back? Okay. But I'm kind of disoriented, so you lose on both ends of following the link. Um, also, the, um, I said three things. I've lost track of what one of them is. Uh, it doesn't reflow. That was a point made in the first talk this morning. And, um, oh, and it's very hard to skim. Flipping through pages is much better than actually trying to scroll up and down on this. So there's a lot of things that are, I find unsatisfying and everybody should find unsatisfying about reading papers in PDF on their computer. You need it for printing, but reading it's not fun. So we're working on converting uh, to HTML for these papers in a way that addresses the problem of it's difficult to get an overview of what's in the paper and you don't want to be jumping all over the place as you follow citations and references. So here's the same paper in HTML. This was built from the LaTeX source that's on the archive with no changes made. Okay? So there's a table of contents that's built automatically, so you can jump around and navigate by that, or you could just go to the next page uh, if you want to. Um, so, uh, just as like what Rob talked about in the previous talk, all the math is by MathJax. So, now if you want to know, well, what's this paper by this go, if you click, the words you've read didn't even move, and I don't even need to move my mouse to close it again. No, okay. Okay. It's a really nice interface. What you've already read doesn't change, and you don't even need to aim to close it. Like that's better than a pop-up. Um, blah blah blah. Section three. There are hyperlinks because okay. Let's go to section three. So now I'm in section three. Um, if I want to know what's equation two point three, I click, and it's there. So there's no jumping back and forth, and I didn't. No, no, the author, which did happen, well, I have a lot of co-authors this time, there was no thing done different about the source to make this happen. So all the citations and references appear in these things we call nulls, which um, solve the problem, at least partially solve the problem of having to jump around. Um, uh, let's look at another paper. Uh, here's another paper by other people in an area I don't even understand. Okay, there's some algebraic geometry. I don't know anything about it. But these people who I didn't consult I, uh, and didn't have to modify their source, this automatically built table of contents is there. And if you want to know what is theorem 3.11, it's there. Or what's proposition 3.4. Okay. So because we're trying to build the collected works of all these mathematicians, it's important that I not ask anybody, oh, could you please rate your LaTeX in a different way? Now, at this stage in the project, there's lots of papers that don't convert very well. If you super micromanage your layout, it, I can't, my program can't handle that. Okay. Um, let me show you one more paper I converted to HTML before I talk a little bit about how it does. Okay. So here's a paper that got mentioned this morning. So after the talk, I went to the archive, I downloaded the LaTeX source, and I ran it through my program. Okay, and this is the result. So table of contents built automatically. Um, what, what paper is this? There it is. And automatically made a link to that paper if you want it. Okay. Uh, here's the footnote. Oh, reference in the footnote. You can nest these as much as you want. Okay. And Rob Beezer's book, which he didn't show you, being, being very modest, you can, when there's a reference to a theorem, you get the theorem. And there, there's a no link to the proof. You can open the proof. If there's a reference to another theorem in that proof, and you go down, as, you drill down as far as you want. 
And then you just close the whole thing. You don't even have to backtrack. You close the whole thing all at once. So my goal is to um, make math, convert math papers to this kind of format. I am not trying to make a general purpose LaTeX converter. I think that's, OK, for me, it's impossible. Um, and there's lots of things that aren't working right. For some reason, this footnote um, did not get detected in some way. I'm not sure why, but I'll look into it. Um, Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Th there's this. Oh, oh yeah, right. Good. I, I noticed that before. I'm not seeing it right now. Um, images are difficult. Uh, let's see. Let's go to your next section. Um, Lists are difficult, tables are difficult, images are difficult. There's a lot of things that aren't really working right. Um, Subfig ref, when you define your own macros. So this is a macro dealing with a compound image with multiple pieces. Okay, well, I mean, I think I'm a little ways from being able to handle that. I do not think it's impossible. Um, don't you have pictures? So these pictures sort of work, but there's all this other, you know. And then this one totally failed. I don't know what's going on there. But Okay, well, let me talk to you offline. So, um, I know there's lots of projects out there that convert LaTeX to HTML and other formats, and I'm not a great programmer, and I just could not see how it would be possible for me to make use of those projects. I'm happy to be told I'm wrong. So if there's some existing project that could be adapted to include these kind of features, I'd love to be told how to do that. But let me spend a couple minutes explaining how um, my program <coughs> works. So it's written in Python, and it's mostly a lot of regular expressions. And it critically exploits the fact that math papers have a very specific structure. Once you're in a section of a paper, there's paragraphs, there's theorems, there's definitions, there's lists, there's figures. And you know, I don't even think you get you know, to use both hands by the time you're done listing all the things. It's not a general document. There's only so many things that are going to happen. And since that's my target, I'm making use of that. So what do I do? I separate the header. I'm just going to read down this and add a little comment. I separate the header, preamble, and so on. I pull out the macros, and some of the macros I choose to expand. For example, if you say backslash be means begin equation, well, unless I make it say begin equation by the time I get to HTML, MathJax is not going to know to render that as an equation. So I kind of detect what I call bad macros and expand them, things like backslash be to be begin equation. Most of the macros I leave alone, and I just hand off to the HTML because MathJax can make use of those macros. Then I just separate all the sections, subsections, and so on. So at any one time, I'm really dealing with a block of text that's a subsection or a subsubsection. And in that, I just pull out all the things that are there. So verbatim environments, equations, figures, lists, um, theorems, definitions, proofs, and so on. Um, and at some point, you actually have to pull out the paragraphs, because if you don't mark the paragraphs in the HTML, you, you don't have paragraph breaks. And there, there's not always a lot of obvious clues as to where paragraphs end. I mean, you have your blank line. Um, so now I've pulled the whole thing into pieces. Okay? Some of those pieces have labels, so find which ones, and remember that's the label. And now, number everything. Okay? After you've done that, you have all the information you need to put it back together. You do need to do some more conversions. You need to convert like EMPH to EM tags and stuff like that. Um, you need to wrap everything in the right tags. So to me, LaTeX, I'm, this project is just doing LaTeX as a markup language, a text markup language. So instead of begin theorem or angle theorem as Rob has in XML, you need to put in some kind of 
HTML with some CSS to style it right as theorem and so on. Okay, so you just have to put all those tags in. All the things that you want to have appear in a null, you put a little file. So each reference has a little file, each theorem has a little file, and that file is what's being shown to you when you click on a, a null. And so you just need to convert the refs and the sites and so on um, into the null, either like a hyperlink if it's referring to a section, or a null link if it's referring to a theorem or whatever. And since I ripped apart the document in enough, I, I know what's being linked to, so I just make the appropriate kind of thing. Kind of like what Rob said, if you do xref in XML, if you're referring to an equation, well, the system knows that's an equation I'm referring to, so it puts little parentheses uh, in them. Okay. So that's sort of a summary of how it works. And um, so where I want to go, what I like to do is abandon converting to HTML and instead convert to XML like what Rob described. And then he's already done the hard work of converting to HTML. So um, that would be you know, so a sufficiently rich XML language that will capture everything I want. Then that's just, I don't need to have multiple output types because Rob's already taken care of that. So that's kind of where I want to go. Um, if there's some existing LaTeX conversion program out there that I can somehow merge with, I'd love to do that because like I'm about at my limit of ability as a programmer in what I'm doing, and there's lots of complicated stuff. Um, you know, one of the hard things I'm going to have to do is figure out how to handle more LaTeX. So uh, images, there's so many ways images can be done. That's a headache. Uh, tables can be very complicated. But macros, I mean, let's say you, um, you have theorem, definition, proof, whatever. So, but some author is going to say, oh, we have a conundrum. So they're going to make a new environment called conundrum. How am I going to figure out that a conundrum is a theorem-like object that should be numbered with theorems and typeset like that? So I'm not sure, but that's kind of where I'm trying to go. Yeah? Okay. Programming you want is latex ML from the guys at least. National Institute Stats. I looked at that and I could not understand the code. <laughs> it's written in code, so that's <laughs> not <laughs> Yeah. But it does, will we'll solve, well, if you can get it to work, <laughs> um, they've just recently upgraded it, um, it will solve most of this, because it actually basically does all the, the tech parsing itself, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about the new theorem conundrum, it'll handle that for you, and give you back a very well-structured XML function. Does it handle it in the sense that I know a conundrum is a type of theorem, and I can number it with that, and it gives me the thing I can make into the table of contents. So. Okay. I have to try. I don't know. Well, maybe it gives you a more you know how to write and it's easy. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, it should not be hard to do. We've been using that for years. So, so it's, it's, it's difficult in the beginning, but it's not a driver. So could you make HTML output that looks this good and has these features where you don't have to jump around? Well, then please do, and I'll stop this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I looked at it, and I just couldn't. If I could sit down for a day with somebody who understands it, th that might help. Any volunteers, please come talk to me. I'll supply I, the wine. I agree with you there. It's not easy to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, but I know the guy who wrote it, so we can cover it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, because I don't want to be repeating work that's out there. But on the other hand, I have to work within my own limitations, and I just could not understand uh, the code. OK, thank you. So any questions? Further questions? Do you have an approach for? Extending the environments and commands to support, like, do you look at the AMS math package and say, all this, I'm going to support all these? Okay, it depends on what you mean by environment. So, anything like theorem definition corollary and any reasonable abbreviation of that, I, the system knows that and it just works. And if I'm processing a paper and there's a conundrum in it, I'll just add conundrum to the list of things that are <laughs> theorem like. Okay, but obviously that's not a long term sustainable thing. So, it depends on how you do it. 
If you're making a new theorem, I mean, that, I can pattern match that you're doing that. If you create a new environment totally out of scratch, there's no clue in your code that it's a theorem-like environment. And I've seen people do that, and I just, I, this XML conversion, nobody else could possibly do that either. There's no way you can detect that that's a theorem-like environment if you build new environment from scratch. And, you know, even if you call it theorem, I mean, how am I going to know that? <laughs> so there's, I just don't see how it's possible to, to do everything. Uh, but I'm happy to be 90%. I don't think I need everything to be perfect. Thank you.